All right, this video is going to talk about geometry, chapter 1.1. And what we're going to do is we're going to identify points, lines, and planes. This is a very vocabulary heavy section. So make sure you guys, if you want the actual definitions or if you want anything more specific, you check out the book because that'll have more specific than I'll probably talk about in this video. All right, so let's start talking about some of the, the terms you're going to need to know. An undefined term, really what that means is that there's no real definition for what it is. So really what you need to know is, I mean, what it looks like, how you name it, and a real life example of that. So first thing we're going to talk about is a point. So a point is going to look something like this. And I'm sure you guys have all seen something like that. And with a point, you should have a letter next to it, something that's going to signify what that we're going to call that. And really, when we write a point, we can write it as point A. That's how we'd write that. That's how we'd name that. That's point A. A real-life example of a point, well, there's countless many different real-life examples of points. I want you guys to go and find those on your own. A line. Let's talk about a line quick. A line goes on infinitely long, and it goes through two points. So the first thing you need to do is find the two points, and then the line goes straight through both of those points. Now, a line goes infinitely long in both directions. And how we name the line is we name it from the two points. And you can name it from any two points. So this line I would call AB. I could also call it BA. That would be the same line. Now, if I were to add a third point, so let's make another line here. I'm going to call this C, D, and E going through there. I could name this line line C, E. I could call it line C, D. I could also call it D, E. And then I could flip-flop each of those, too. I could call it E, C, D, C, or E, D. All of those names count for lines. And again, you can see lines anywhere or a lot of places. They're going infinitely long, so it might be a little bit harder to find an actual true line in the real world because they go infinitely long forever. Plane's a little bit harder to, to draw, but what a plane ends up looking like is you, you need three points, at least three points to name a plane. So I'm going to call this one A, this one B, and this one C. So really what a plane does is that it goes and it encompasses all of those points. And it goes on infinitely. So really the way I like to think about this is that it's kind of like a piece of paper that goes on infinitely long. If you hold it out and the paper, just hold the piece of paper out and it'll go on forever. That's what a plane really is. So the way we name these planes is we're going to name it off of these three points. So this is plane, and I'm going to call it A, B, C. Now really you could also call this plane B, C, A. You could call it plane A, C, B. You could call this plane B, A, C. You could also call this plane C, B, A or plane C, A, B. Again, it doesn't matter which one you call it. You just have to call it three points that are actually on that plane. All right. Now let's talk about some other terms in here. A segment. What a segment is, is it has two endpoints. It's very similar to a line. And some people call this a line segment. So a line uses two points. The difference between a line segment and a line is the fact that it ends. So the segment has two endpoints there where it ends at A and B. And the way we'd name this is we'd name this A, B, and we'd put a dash on the top there. So I want you to go back to the first page that we were talking about here. And I want you to look how I made my symbol above my line. Notice I put the two arrows at the end of the top of my lines. The lines go on infinitely long, so I need those arrows. When I draw my name for my plane, since it's ending at the points, I put the ending points up there. Again, we could also call this B, A. So basically what an endpoint is, that's where your line ends. That's your point where it stops. It can't go any further past that point. That's what an endpoint is. And an endpoint really is a point that's on a segment, a line. Or sorry, not a line. It's not going to be on a line. It's either on a segment or it's on a ray. Now, it could be attached to a line if it's also going off on another segment, but we won't get into that. All right, so what a ray is. What a ray is, is it's going to be just kind of like a segment and just kind of like a line where we have two points here, A and B. 
except for array is going to have one endpoint and the other way is going to go on infinitely long. Now this is where it gets tricky because this array can only have one name. This array can only have one name and the name that this one's going to have is AB. And the reason why is the endpoint is going to be at A and it goes infinitely long through B. If I had array BA, so if I had array like this BA, the way I'd have to write that is B A and the endpoint would be B and it'd go infinitely long through A. So you have to make sure you label the rays correctly. Correctly, Those ones do not have two names for them. And last but not least, let's talk about an opposite ray. So an opposite rays, you're going to have three points, at least three points, A, B, C. Whoops, I labeled C instead of the point. C, and it's going to go, the ray, the, it's going to go for a line here. And what a ray is, remember, a ray, we have a ray within this part. We have the ray B going through A. So I'm going to label B A as one of my rays. Now the opposite ray is going to share the same endpoint, so it has to share that B, but it's going to go in the opposite direction. I know they were trying to trick you when they named it the opposite ray. It's going in the opposite direction, but it shares the same endpoint. So ray B A and ray B C, those are opposite rays of each other. All right, collinear. What does collinear mean? Well, it means to be on the same line. Linear means line. So here we go, A and B. Those are on the same line. And collinear means that you're on the same line. So A and B are on the same line. They are collinear. Again, if you guys want the actual definitions of these, you can go in your book and write them on down. Coplanar. Coplanar, so again, we're going to draw our plane. Remember, it kind of looks, it can look like a piece of paper that goes on infinitely long forever. Coplanar means that we have points that are on the same plane. That means they're on the same level, on the same plane, on the same piece of paper that goes on infinitely long. Intersection, that's where they meet. So an intersection of two lines would look something like this. So that's what the intersection of two lines would look like. Now, forgive my inability to draw, but I'm going to draw what an intersection would look like of two planes. So if I had a plane like this, and then let's say I had a plane that went up straight up and down, or went like this, here we'll do that, went like that, and then went down. So this would be the intersection point, and I'll draw that in red so you guys can see. Where they cross there in that red would be an intersection point. And remember, since they go on infinitely long, the intersection of that would be, and I should change that black, I should make those dash because they're in the back there, right? Where you can't actually see them. The intersection of two planes would be a line because those are going to go on infinitely long forever, those planes, which means that that intersection point is going to go on infinitely long forever. If you look at the intersection of two lines, well, you only have a point. So the intersection of a lot, two lines is a point. The intersection of two planes is a line. All right, well, we already did some of this stuff, so I'm not going to go over that. Let's go over some problems here so you guys can see some examples here. Give two other names for line WQ. So WQ is going through here. And this is something I forgot to talk about. I apologize. So first thing is let's flip-flop it. So Q, W. Now, if you look up on the top there, this little guy has a label on it, and it's G. They labeled right next to it G, so we can call this line G. Now, those are the two other names you can, guys can call that same line because it only has two points given, and it's only got the name G on it. All right, so now we have to look at the plane V. So plane V, the, the way we know that this is a plane, because it's down in the corner here, and it's this whole plane here. Again, forgive my inability to draw very well, but that's our plane V. So we're given how many points on plane V. Well, this point is on plane V, this point is on plane V, this point is on plane V, and this point is on plane V. So we can use those points to name it. Now, we can name it a bunch of different names here. We can name it plane... R, Q, S, we can name it plane R, Q, T, we can name it plane T, S, Q, and really any combination of those. So I'm not going to list out all of them because there's a lot of them. So make sure you guys know that we can name a lot of different names. I only asked for one name. I gave three of them for you. All right, we're going to name a point that is not coplanar with R, S, and T. Well, well look at that. I'm going to erase some of this stuff so you can see. We already have those ones a 
highlighted there, Q or R, S, and T. Those are on plane V. Now notice, there's only one point that I have up there that I'm given is not on plane V, and that's point W. So W is the only point that is not on plane V, which means that it's not coplanar to R, S, and T. So let's name three points that are collinear. Remember, collinear means that they go in a straight line. There's only one set of three points that goes on a line there, and I'm going to highlight those for you. It's this guy, this guy, and this guy. Those are the three that are on there. So the three points are point R, point Q, and point S. Those are my three collinear points. And last question we're going to go is what point W is point W coplanar with points Q and R? So let's look up there. Q and R, are they coplanar? Well, the answer, it's not up there, but it actually is yes, they are coplanar. Yes, they are coplanar. Any three points are coplanar. Now, they're not coplanar on V, but there is another plane that goes through those three points, which makes them coplanar. All right, I want to look quick at this, and I'm just going to talk about it. I'm not going to write. Give two other names for LN. Well, LN, you could call it NL. You could call it line B. You could also call it M, line MN, line NM. Go backwards there. So you could call it line LN, line NL, line MN, line NM, or line B. Any of those. So give another name for the point or the plane Z. Well, then you got to use any of those three points to name that. All right, well, that's all I'm going to talk about in this first video. So make sure you guys rewatch anything you need to or ask questions if you got them.